Hello everyone. Welcome to my sewing room. I'm Jenny Swenson. I'm going to be talking to you today about a little bit more about a pattern that we brought in for Sofa in the beginning of the month in April and it's the neighborhood sweatshirt. Several people were very interested in how easy it was and so I wanted to show you a few tips to make it even easier for you. So this is the pattern. It's available at qualitysewingandvacuum.com. Um, I have the one um, fancy one on and I have a lightweight one that I can show you some of the techniques on and then I have a, a heavyweight one that I'm going to be um, sewing on today okay so this is a performance wear knit so that I can wear it in the summer it's very very lightweight this is a um, polyester knit and I bought both of these at Billy's Fabrics in Chehalis, Washington. And um, I don't know if she has any of this one left. Um, it was so popular. So um, let's get started on this. The first thing I'm going to talk to you about is um, working with the knits. On this pattern, the seam allowance is a half inch. So what I did is I sewed it at the half inch. Um, I used some white thread on this. This is the current one that I'm working on. Um, I sewed at the half inch and then when you serge it you have this line of sewing to sew along so that you you know where your seam allowance is and it will trim and sew at the same time. So on my performance knit here you can see that it is serged to finish off that edge and then on the right side you top stitch it and I did this at two millimeters. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'll be showing it to you though. Um, next to that seam to hold the serged edge down and it controls any loft that you would have especially on the, the current one that I'm working on. It's very thick fabric so that will control that a little bit more. Okay so I've moved to my serger now and you can see on the foot here there are two little nubs and what that is, is it shows you where your needles are going to sew when you guide your fabric in. So it's very helpful when I have my fabric here. The white stitching you can see and I'm going to guide it just to the right of that first little nub because I have a four thread so I've got both needles in. And as you serve, you just continue to guide it along that nub. And then when you're done, you will have it very close to that edge that you've already sewn, okay? And then it also controls all that bulk. So this fabric is, it's um, like a terry, French terry on the outside and it's smooth on the inside. Now we're back at the sewing machine and I'm going to use a narrow edge foot or an edge stitching foot, which has a blade in the center of it so that you can guide the fabric with that blade in the well of the seam that you just sewed. So I have my fabric here that I've just serged and I'm going to place it right side up. I have my needle moved to two millimeters to the left and my blade here is going to go right along that edge. My seam, seam stitch length is at 4.0 because I don't need, this doesn't really hold much, it just controls everything. And so it's going to stitch in that well and hold that nice finished seam in place so that you don't have to worry about it um, misbehaving in the wash and it will hold its shape much better. Okay, so when you look at the um, performance fabric here, it's much easier to see. So along all of these edges, you can see the top stitching. So on the top of the pocket here, this is top stitched here on the seam of the edge, pocket edge. And then all of my seams are top stitched in that way. You don't have to do that, but I like the finished look of it. When you are making the pocket, 
and you have to uh, top stitch that. What I found is you can use the um, Wonder Tape to hold that seam allowance down and it you fold it under a half inch and then you seam it at three-eighths of an inch. On the Foff, if you have, if you use your zero A foot, from the center needle to the edge of that foot is three-eighths of an inch. So when you're top stitching, it makes it really nice if you want a three-eighths inch seam. So I have traced my pattern onto the Swedish tracing paper. And um, one thing I wanted to show you that's very nice about this pattern is they have made these um, seam allowances flat like this so that you know that when you're piecing them together they will that seam will be in a perfect position to do that and I've got two that I've pinned together here to show that to you um, this is the hood okay and here is that edge that's nice and it's going to be perfect when you come here because this is the seam allowance do you see that okay so all of those um, joins where the seams come together will be flat then and you don't have to worry about any flags or pointed ends and you don't know where the seam allowance is because that works really well. The next thing we're going to talk about is the zipper placement and on this jack you're going to notice that you have two pockets, one on either side here and you have the um, band down here and these are very important to match when you're applying that zipper. So what I do is when I am taking my zipper on my garment that I'm finishing here, I placed it down, right sides down, with the bottom where I wanted it to go, and I drew a chalk line on the wrong side of the zipper, because that's the side I'm going to be sewing on to begin with, and um, drew it through so that I knew where those pockets should line up. You can do the same thing on the um, bottom here. Use a chalk line there. And also one at the top. However, at the top we're going to be shortening the zipper, so right now I'm not doing that. Okay. So let's talk about shortening the zipper because as you notice this zipper is a lot longer than what it should be and actually each zipper that I did was longer than what was called for. So when we are shortening a zipper, there are um, certain things that you do. So let me go and get my tools. I'll be right back. Okay, for this sweatshirt, we're using a uh, separating zipper, and there are, they come in two different types. They come with a plastic tooth version, which is the, like the one I'm wearing, and um, this little one here, or it has the coil zipper, and you can shorten either of them. You are going to shorten only from the top because you do need that base on the bottom to put the jacket on. You're going to use either a wire cutter or I have a Fiskars, an old Fiskars tool that's similar to that. And then you're going to need the needle nose pliers in order to put the, needle, the uh, zipper stop on the top once you've removed those teeth. So to start, what you're going to do is to start cutting with the um, tool and I just go in there and make a snip snip and then you can start working those teeth off and so I cut on the teeth and then I remove them with the needle nose pliers okay you want the uh, zipper tape to be intact because you are going to be using it um, when you're sewing it into the jacket. So try and keep that as neat as you can. And then I just keep clipping them off. Okay, so that's for the coil. All right. And then for the tooth zipper, it's going to be a little bit easier because they're individual. So you just kind of cut in between them. And then I go from the side of it and clip them off. All right and then you can pull them off. Very easy to do, okay? So you just go from the top of that zipper and remove it. So I have cut off the edge of the teeth of the um, coil zipper here, and what you'll notice is once you've done that, if you pull from the inside, the outside of the zipper here, on the little loop, 
you will end up getting almost like a little fish hook of a plastic if you can see that okay and so it comes off very easily and neatly once you get it started so you just keep pulling those little fish hooks off and you will have a nice neat edge then and you're going to cut it at one inch from that the top of the zipper where you're going to be starting so once you have your teeth removed from that extra area that you don't need the length um, you're going to put a zipper stop on there and what I do is I make sure that I pinch it a little bit first from the side like this and then I pinch it really hard to make sure it's going to stay on there okay and that will stop your zipper from going off the end when you are done all right so we have um, the zipper is an inch longer than it's necessary okay so the next step once you've shortened that zipper to the correct length um, remember that you're going to leave an inch above the teeth and then um, you're going to lay the zipper right side down against the edge of the fabric and I'll demo this too but you're going to stitch along where the zipper teeth are and then you're going to turn it right side out and you are going to finish it off with your top stitch. If you don't have a serger, I forgot to mention this, you don't have to finish off these edges. They are not going to fray. You can actually um, trim them very nicely with the um, scissors that we brought in for so fun the 7170s if you angle them as you are cutting you will end up actually grading the seam so if you angle them like this and cut that seam is graded all on its own so you just angle it whichever way you need to and um, trim that seam to a quarter inch and you don't have to do anything extra. You can zigzag if you want to, you can pink it if you want to, but it's not necessary because these are knits and they're not going to fray. So we're going to um, top, we're going to stitch down the zipper now. All right, so I have sewn the zipper down, right side down against my fabric, onto the um, right side of the fabric. And when you're using your zipper foot, this is the Foff zipper foot, and um, some people put this on backwards and can't figure out how to use it. Remember that you always need to be able to read the number from where you are sitting at the machine. So um, it goes either to the left side or the right side, and I'm going to put it on the left side here. And then I'm going to top stitch this down. Now, I like to pin because it gives me something to follow there. So I'm going to pin here along that edge where I'm going to be stitching. And it also just helps hold everything more steady for me. Okay. And then I'm going to leave my needle position in the same position there and I'm going to top stitch down. The nice thing about this technique is it will keep the fabric away from the teeth of the zipper because we're using heavier zipper here and um, it just helps it to be neater. So it's going to top stitch down and I'm watching how my fabric guides into that foot. So I use that edge of the foot to help me guide it. And I'm just top stitching to make that edge look nice. Okay, so you would use a whatever thread you want. You can use a contrasting one, but it's going to show your um, stitching more. And my stitch length is at 3.5. You could do it at 4. This is a heavy knit okay and so it is going to be a very nicely top stitched down and the zipper is going to flow evenly without getting that fabric caught in the teeth one of the final steps on your sweatshirt is going to be finishing off the hood area um, where it's sewn to the body of the garment and on 
the instructions, they tell you to use bias tape. Now, if you're like me, I've used up all of my bias tape making masks. So I will be using a hem tape, which is a lace tape on my current one, and that will encase that edge. I don't have to worry about fraying or anything, so it should be nice. Um, you're going to edge stitch this down, if you can see here, very close to the edge of both sides of that bias, and it ends up being almost in the seam line here and then just on the other side of it. Okay, so it's going to be finished off. You can turn that under if you uh, want. You can top, you can hand stitch it down, or you can just leave it. And it's going to finish off that garment very nicely. And I want to thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoy that pattern as much as I do. I can see it in many, many different fabrics, and and it's perfect for what we're doing now when we're staying home, and to add a little warmth to your day and happiness. And thank you so much for watching my video.